<laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa. Welcome to Vanny It All. And today I'm super excited because I'm going to introduce you to one of the girls I actually went to school with at Caltech. Yeah, I'm Georgia. I uh, just finished my PhD at Caltech Yay! Uh, two months ago. <laughs> I started in 2012 and I studied um, a field called nanophotonics with uh, Harry Atwater. So tell us about your background. Where did you go to school before starting at Caltech? Yeah, I, I went to school in Greece actually um, until I finished my undergrad there. I went to uh, school in Athens. I studied electrical and computer engineering. But then I realized I like physics a little too much, so I went to I went Nerd to CERN. This one. <laughs> yeah, so I went to CERN for one year. Tell us what's CERN. CERN is the the, the big accelerator in uh, in Geneva where they discovered the Higgs boson. So I was there right before the discovery, and it was pretty cool. But I was working as a technical student. Uh, I was basically doing engineering, and that's how I realized that engineering is very useful but I kind of wanted to do a little bit more fundamental research, um, which is why I applied to study uh, physics, applied physics at Caltech. So yeah. at what point did you decide that like research was for you? Like how did you find the CERN program that got you into this? Uh, yeah, I, I had a really, really good math professor in undergrad and she invited me over to... She, to, I like that. Yes. Everyone I've interviewed it says a guy and she got them interested. No, no, I owe a big part of my, my path to her. So she noticed that I was kind of uh, good in, in math. She was teaching us differential equations. And um, she called me to her office and she said, you should go to CERN for a year uh, wow. and work over there, which was very scary at the time to go abroad. Um, and study, but uh, it was by far the best advice I've gotten. Yeah. So, um, in undergrad, did you do any other research internships besides the CERN one? Um, um, so the way it works in Greece is that the final year you you do a thesis, so you have to go to a lab and work with some. So you have to. Or, it's not like a choice. No, which is okay. why it's a five years program. That's pretty um, good. Yeah. So it's yeah. four years of classes and then one extra year of doing that. Uh, so I did. Um, I went in a lab that uh, works on telecommunications, so nanophotonics, but more like um, data oriented, okay. uh, engineering oriented, okay. and that's how I got interested in into the work I went did I at Caltech. How do you feel like your background, your cultural background, and your academic background influences the way you approach STEM projects and uh, things you're working on today? Yeah. Um, well, I think that engin studying engineering has helped me very much in terms of technical skills and like math and mathy things and mm -hmm. maybe being being more comfortable with a computer and with coding. Um, that was really important. But going even further back before undergrad, uh, I am very fortunate to have had uh, scientists around me. So I was definitely, I had an advantage compared to other students uh, that I met later who didn't have a role model. So for me, um, my dad, for example, he's a mathematician, so we would... Uh, That's pretty talk, cool. I remember we would talk about what are the chances of aliens existing. Uh, so and calculate the probability? Like, no, we wouldn't go that far. But <laughs> I, would, I would ask really, like, weird questions. Like, are there other planets that could be habitable or not? That's and, like, so he cool. would try to give me an order of magnitude of the numbers, how many planets are wow. in the galaxy. He's and, not like, just Google it. But there was no Google no, back then. there wasn't. Yeah, we're that old. So... Um, um, I think that's how I got interested in science in the first place. Give us a short synopsis of what you did for your PhD. I worked on a field called metamaterials, which are artificial materials that are usually designed to have properties that do not exist in nature. For example, cool. uh, we don't have materials that have a negative index of refraction. The refractive index of air is one, of yeah. water it's kind of uh, something a little higher, but nothing, no natural materials have a negative index. But that would be cool, for example, for bu building invisibility cloaks. Right. That's, that's a cool Harry Potter yeah. uh, story. Uh, but or are, I'm sure the military would be very interested exactly. in that. Exactly. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of interesting applications coming right. for like absorption or uh, magnetism. So we don't have materials that absorb 100% of the light, which would be really important for solar cells. Right, right, right. Or a little more fundamentally, um, we don't have magnetic materials at high frequencies where, you know, 
we see visible light, it doesn't en uh, interact strongly with materials in terms of their magnetic properties. And those would have super cool vanish. applications if you want those like magnetic trains or all those things you see in sci-fi movies, right. right? Yeah, yeah. So, but they only exist at lower frequencies. We cannot really translate them. So there are a lot of natural limitations, which is why the whole field of metamaterials has grown mm -hmm. um, so far. Yeah. In your PhD, what has been the most rewarding thing that you've done? Mm. One of my recent, most recent works, um, uh, it was rewarding because it kind of contradicted um, a previous assumption that uh, was taken as, you know, a fact. It was like a tiny assumption that that made people think that a certain type of structure doesn't have any magnetic properties. But then um, in our recent work, we showed that. Uh, actually, that's not true. And if you understand how how this magnetic property is there, you can engineer it and it make it like really important and uh, pronounced. That's awesome. And I think that's like a testament to how we work at Caltech. It's not just like getting to a number or an efficiency. It's always understanding the fundamentals of how things work and like yeah. giving like a sort of base line for the field in general. And I think that's probably what your work is done right, in that that's, field. Yeah. It, th it was great to be at Caltech at the time because I, I had good people around me to, to help me and push me and together we, we figured out how to explain this, which was definitely the most important part. Yeah. And how does that parlay in what you're doing now? So now I am at Stanford. I am a postdoc in um, electrical engineering and I'm going to be working in a field that is much more applied. So I guess I'm going back to being a little bit of an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically the idea is we take this knowledge, this previous knowledge, that you can engineer structures to behave as if they uh, were magnetic mm -hmm. to, um, to enhance the, the efficiency of how we um, transfer heat. So um, there is this other field called near field heat transfer. So basically, the That's idea for like is thermoelectrics that and thermo thermoelectrics and thermophotovoltaics and yeah. Uh, so basically, a a big problem today with uh, energy consumption is that twenty to fifty percent of the energy consumed by uh, uh, industry in the United States is extracted to the environment in terms in uh, in the form of heat. So, so like a lot of the um, energy cells. Dissipate waste heat that we don't recover and can right. be converted and to electricity. We don't take advantage of, right. of it. And if we did, it would improve the operational efficiency of a lot of systems and yeah. basically our overall fuel economy. Right. Yeah. So the idea is to use nanophotonics to uh, take advantage of this heat to produce electricity um, passively without use of electricity. Um, That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. And what is the potential for this? Field if you succeed? Um, the exact goal of my postdoc is to increase the efficiency of previously existing um, uh, PV cells that. Um, PV is photovoltaic for anyone who doesn't know. Thermal photovoltaic. Thermal yes, cells. Yes. yes. So um, the idea is that if we can um, now extract. Um, some extra energy because we design structures that interact not only with electric fields but also with magnetic fields then can increase the efficiency of the whole system. That would be pretty cool, Georgia. That would be very cool. I wish yeah. you luck. Thank you. <laughs> luck. So what are your plans after this postdoc? Um, I'm still figuring it out. I think it's, uh, a lot of time. <laughs> it's working in a field that is kind of like at the uh, borderline between fundamental science and, and technology. Yeah. Uh, it's like um, research and industry are so close to each right, other. Right, right. That That's I think great. That's a kind good of field. Jump, yeah, jump back between and the two. Yeah, yeah. And if you make something that is completely applicable, you're in the right place to get that started. And here in Silicon Valley, right? Like yeah, this is I'm the start really of excited. Capital to be of the here. world. Yes, so. yes. Stanford is awesome. And the, <laughs> the Bay Area is fantastic. What advice would you have given to your younger self? You know, now that you've done it all, you're done with the PhD. How do you think you would have? What do you think you have done better? Yeah, great question. Most I would answer like that's the advice that everyone else gives me apart from myself. Trust myself more. So I think it's our gender, but also society. It makes me question a lot of my decisions and a lot of like the the little, small, and big decisions too. So I feel like most of them were were correct in the end. And of if course. I could <laughs> not spend that much time doubting and questioning and you know thinking Worrying. about something. 20 times instead of just going and, and doing trusting your gut instinct yeah which is probably 
the right, right. answer anyway. Yeah, yeah. And pay less attention to what everyone else is doing that might be good for them, but not for you. Just you, if you know that you're good at something and you also enjoy doing it, there is no way to, to do wrong. Yeah. Right. Okay, welcome, Georgia, and I wish you all the best. I will also include a blog post that sort of goes into a little bit of detail about what Georgia does and what it, she's going to do. Um, so we might have mentioned some words that like are over the top of some of the young people's heads, but we'll try to explain that in the blog post. So click the link below to read a little bit more about nanophotonics, and let's follow Georgia's path to success, guys. Thank she's going to kill Vanessa. it. <laughs> all right, thank you for watching.